were destroyed during slavery. So now that we don't value them anymore, right? We don't, just like we don't value the food that we eat. We'll eat anything, all right? Just like we'll touch anything, right? That's to become the mindset of our brothers today. Right. All right, that's a destroyed slave mentality. We have to come out of that mindset. Right. All right, we have to come out of that mindset, but we can't do it alone because we need each other. We gotta unify like the scripture said, gather yourselves together. Read it again from the top. Gather yourselves together. Yay, gather together. Oh nation, not desire. Oh nation, not desire. All right, we must gather together under God. If we right. truly love God, if we truly love God, then we'll serve God how he told us to serve him. All right, I can't say that I love my daughter all right, I can't say that I love my daughter if I'm feeding my daughter things that will kill her. Right. I don't truly love my daughter. I can't say I love you, sweetheart, and then give her food that's going to kill her at the same time, poison. I can't feed my daughter poison and say I love her at the same time. It's the same way with God, my sister. Do you love God? You truly can't say you love the Lord if he tells you, look, do not eat crab, shrimp, lobster and then you eat crab, shrimp, lobster. Right. You understand? You can't truly say, I love the Lord. The Lord says, sister, cover yourself up. Don't come out the house with your whole body revealed. You understand? And you say, nah, the hell with that. I like this and this is what I see on TV. I'm gonna do it anyway. Do you truly love God? No, you don't truly love God. You understand? You don't truly love God if you do that. My sister right here, come over here. Come talk to us. You right here. Come talk to us, my sister. Do you love God? You love God. All right. We're going to show you how you can show God that you love him. Is that all right? Is that all right? Because some of these things you may not have known. You may not have been taught. All right? So we want to make sure that we highlight some of these things in the Bible of how we are supposed to conduct ourselves as a holy people right. unto the Lord. All right? You got what I want? The book of John 14. Uh, John 14, 15. Yeah, you can read that. The book of John, chapter 14 and verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. What's the Bible say? If you love me, keep my commandments. God says if you truly love him, that you'll do what he says. The things that God say, you'll do. You understand? God, What God says, you'll do. All right, give me Sirach chapter 2 verse 16. We'll come back. Sirach chapter 2 verse 16. All right? My sister, I want you to listen good to this. All right? We're going to read Sirach chapter 2 verse 16. Seventh day Adventures. Okay, very good. Read what you got. The book of Sirach, chapter 2 and verse 16. They that fear the Lord will seek his, excuse me, seek that which is well pleasing unto him. Did you hear what the Bible said? The Bible said they that fear the Lord will do what? They that fear the Lord will seek that which is well pleasing unto him. What's well pleasing unto the Lord, my sister? What, what things are well pleasing unto the Lord? Following Christ, very good. Listen to what the Bible is going to tell you. Come on. And they that love him shall be filled with the law. Shall be filled with what? With the law. With the law. You understand? So along with Christ, give me Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Along with Christ, what else do we need to do? Right, right now we're talking about how you can please the Lord if you love him. All right? My, my beautiful sister over there says... Well, we have to follow Christ. That's how we do the things that are pleasing unto the Lord, right? Right. Read what you got. The book of Revelations, chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. What was the first thing the Bible said? Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that do what? Here are they that keep the commandments of God. So we need to keep the commandments of God like we read. They will be filled with the law, right? Come on. And the faith of Jesus. What else do we need? The faith of Jesus. So along with keeping the commandments, my sister, what else do we need? What else do we need? Did you hear? We need the faith in Christ and what else? And keeping the commandments. Very good. Right. My sister right here, do you know God's commandments? Give me one. Do not steal. Do not kill. You got a commandment for me over there? Do not lie. Very good. My brother right here, you got a commandment for me? 
She said, do not kill, do not steal, do not lie, do not, she said, do not lie, you got a commandment for me? Adultery. Do not commit adultery, very good. All right, Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse five. I'm gonna read another commandment for you. My brother right here, before you leave, I'm gonna read a commandment that's not found within the tent. All right, my sister, you tell me if your Seventh-day Adventist church teaches you this commandment we're about to read. All right, because my sister right here with the red shirt, what's your name? Zelda, a lot of churches in our community are not teaching all of God's commandments. Right. A lot of these churches are picking and choosing and teaching some commandments. All right. But would you say that the so-called black Hispanics, the ones that live in the ghetto today, that's murdering, killing each other, robbing, stealing, the ones that have become uh, known as astonishments and only good for entertainment on the earth. Do you think we only need a few of God's commandments or we need all of God's commandments? Say it again. We need all of God. What you say? We need all of God's commandments. Zelda, what you think? We need all of God's commandments, right? All right, so we should all agree that we need this right here. All right, read what you got. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. So Zelda, I'm going to ask you, all right? The Bible says that a woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. I want you to think about that, then I'm going to come back to you, all right? Read on. Neither shall a man. Neither shall what? Neither shall a man. A woman's garment. The Bible says neither should a man put on a woman's garment. So I said I'm gonna come back to you, Zelda. My man right here, what's your name? Fordham's. Fordham's. What type of clothing could our men wear today that pertain to women? That God says don't wear. Read that part again. Neither shall a man. Neither shall who? Neither shall a man. So what I'm asking you is what type of clothes could a man wear that what? Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. What type of clothing? could a man put on today that would be described as a woman's garment that God says he shouldn't wear? Dress. A dress. Should a, my, my sister over here, should a man wear a dress? No, he shouldn't, right? That's, that's, that's crazy. You would look at a man like something was wrong with him. Or maybe you would think he's a man of God. No. Would you say if I had a dress on that I was a man of God? No, you would you, you're, you're hesitating. You're scaring me over there. All right, you, you're making me nervous. All right? If I had a dress on, would you think that I was a man of God? No. All right, Zelda. If I had a dress on, would you think that I was a man of God? No. My brother right here, if I had a... No. All right? Very God like your response. Right. He like, hell no. That's how your response should have been. All right? Now read it again from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. God says that a woman now shouldn't wear that which pertains to a man. All right? So, Zelda, you had a chance to think about it. What does that mean? A woman shouldn't wear what? Very good. Everybody hear what she said? Zelda said that a woman should not wear pants. You agree with that or you disagree? You in between. Why are you in between for? You hold them shaking on me. Come on. What you got? You say it doesn't matter what a woman is. You don't matter what your woman wear? Not a pants, but, but not uh, revealing clothes. Revealing clothes. All right? But remember, we have to go with what the Bible says, right? So what if I had a dress on that wasn't revealing? Would that make a difference for me? <laughs> you see you see what I'm saying? It's easy when you think about it that way. What about for you, sister? If I had a dress on that wasn't revealing, would it be okay? No, it wouldn't. All right, so now think about this concerning what we just read. All right, read it again from the top. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. God says that a woman shall not wear that which pertains to a man. There's no wiggle room, there's no in between. So we have a specific type of clothing that was created for who? For men. You understand? Give me uh, Exodus chapter 28. There's a specific type of clothing that was created for men. That's what we're trying to show you. We're talking about the things that men and women should wear and should not wear. Basic commandments that have big effects, that have complex effects on our neighborhoods, complex effects on our communities, complex effects on our children, all right? Complex effects on what? On our generations, right. right? But we're talking about basic commandments. But these basic commandments have what? Complex effects, all right? Read what you got. The book of Exodus. Chapter 28 and verse 41. And thou shalt put them upon Aaron thy brother. So we're reading about something that was commanded to put upon Aaron and his brothers or his sisters? 
and Aaron, the brother. No, that's sisters. The brother. No, and, no, no, your sisters. The brother. So Aaron was commanded for these things to be put upon his brothers, right? Come on. And his sons. No, them. no, their daughters. And his sons. And just the sons. You understand? No woman is being mentioned here. So now we need to find out what are those things, right? Come on. With them. And shall anoint them. And consecrate them. And sanctify them. Consecrate them and sanctify them. Set them apart, right? Come on. That they may minister unto me in the priest's office. And thou shalt make them linen breeches. Wait, who's commanded to wear the breeches? And thou shalt make them linen breeches. Now, when we read the scriptures, you're not going to see thou shalt not get a tattoo. You're not going to see that. Right. You're going to see don't print any markings upon your flesh for the dead. That's what you're going to see. You know what I'm talking about. It's not going to say thou shalt not get a tattoo. Right. So what are we reading right here when it says thou shalt make what? Make them. Linen breeches. Thou shalt make them linen breeches. What is that? What is the, what is a breech? What is a breech? Linen breeches. What is it talking about? Pull your pants, pull your pants up. Right. You ain't never heard somebody say, boy, pull your breeches up. You understand? If you ask an older woman, I bet her mama used to say something like that to her sons. You know what I'm talking about? You know what I'm talking about? Breeches, breeches, breeches. So we're talking about pants, things that you wear. You understand? If, 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 uh, 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 when you think of britches, you should automatically think of pants. Right. All right? It's the same thing as me saying pants today. All right? So who's commanded to put the britches on? The men or the women? The men. The men or the women? The man. The men or the women, sister? The man. You right. understand? The man, the man, the man. All right? But we've fallen far away from this commandment. We've fallen far away from it. Nowhere in the Bible do we receive commandments for the sisters, for the woman, to put on pants. Right. We don't receive that anywhere, right? Back in the day, right, you used to hear a phrase, all right, or a question rather, and it was, I wear the pants in my house. What was that supposed to signify or mean? What was that supposed to mean? If your wife wears the pants in your house, what does that mean? She's the She's what? She's the head of the house. Right. You understand? So when you say that your wife can wear pants, what are you really saying to her? Oh, she's in control. She's in control. Right. Or she can be in control. Or maybe y'all both can drive the car at the same time. You ever seen a car with two people trying to turn the steering wheel? Don't try it on the highway. You understand? Don't try it going 65 miles an hour. Bring it out. All right. Don't. But you know what we try it with? We try it with our precious children. With our precious children, right? We bring them up in a household, in an environment where we both can have our hands on the steering wheel, right? How? Because we both can wear pants. But pants signifies what? The head. the head of the household. Right. All right, there's no equality with God. The Bible don't say that there's no equality between a man and a woman with God. You understand? The same way there's no equality with Christ and his Father, the Most High God. There's no equality there. Bring it out. There's no equality. It's the same way with a woman. So when you say that your woman can wear pants, what are you saying? What are you saying? You're going to change that mindset today. You ain't going to leave here with that. Right? He's going he to change his mindset today. It's no longer okay for his woman to wear pants. It ain't all right no more. You understand? He didn't know. He didn't know. It's okay. All right? So you can leave here and you can fix it. You understand? You can leave here. You can fix it. You can change, right? It's, it's not okay. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. You got what I want? Yes, sir. Read what you got. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. And the head of the woman is the man. God says that the head of the woman is who? The man. Hey, my brother right here. My brother. Hey, yay, lie. I want this brother to hear this. Read this right here. Read it again. But I will have you know that the head of every man is Christ. Who's the head of man? Is there equality with me and Christ? No. Come on. And the head of the woman is the man. Who's the head of the woman? Is there equality between the man and the woman? No. Come on. And the head of Christ is God. Just like Christ in the Most High, there's no equality there. All right? But when you say, yeah, it's okay for my woman to wear pants as long as they're not revealing. 
You saying it's okay for her to do what? It's, o it's okay for her to be in control as long as she don't do it all the time. That's what you're saying, right? As long as she don't, as long as she don't check me all the time in front of every. Maybe if she just check me at home when nobody's looking, that's okay. You understand? She can disrespect me at home when no one's looking, right? That's what you're saying. When she can put pants on, they're not revealing. As long as she, as long as it don't get out. As long as nobody knows what's really going on at home, and it's all right, right? As long as she act right in public, right? It's okay, right? Because nobody can see it. It's not revealing, right? So we got to come out of that mindset, right? So it, it, a woman has to wear what? A dress all the time. All the time. You understand that, sis? You say you listening? You listening? Do you understand it, though? Give me Psalms 111, verse 10. Bring it out. All right? Do you understand it, though? This is where we struggle as a people, all right? Because we hear something, all right? And we understand it, right? We got, we, we know what it means, right? But do we really have a good understanding? There's only one way to tell. It's by your application. All right, read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. A good understanding. How do you get a good understanding? A good understanding. Have all they that do his commandments. You got to actually do what we just read about. That's how you get a good understanding. Right? So, my sister, you'll better understand this how. You'll better understand what we read how. Let, no, read it again. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. You've already listened, right? Come on. A good understanding. A good understanding, come on. Have all they that do. That what? That do. That what? That do. A good understanding have all they that do, come on. His commandments. So how do you get a better understanding? You already heard it. How do you get a good understanding, my sister? What does that look like for you? What does that look like for you? Say it again. You understand that, but how do you get a good understanding? The only way you get a good understanding is if you, if you take off the pants and put what on? A what? A dress. All right. That's how you get a good understanding. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is children with role models.